we were doing lots of celebrations of healthcare heroism. But on Saturday, uh, at the end of that week, we had a need to test an elder who was having some minor respiratory symptoms. And that had really been presumed to be because of aspiration. Uh, there was not an expectation that that test would be positive. However, that Saturday night, the test results did return. And that person was positive. And that meant that evening, that night, the director of nursing and I had to dash back in uh, to manage the plan that we had already had in place. And part of that was to distribute PPE. And as you know, that meant new PPE that really doesn't typically get used in our setting. Uh, sure, we use gowns, but the, those N95 masks were certainly not something we're used to using. And with that brought some fear with our staff and we would had to do a lot more re-education. So that entailed making sure that we were avoiding the rest of the residents. We had to go through two outdoor courtyards, frankly, in the pitch black with a bariatric bed that was low to the ground with lots of PPE on that was causing the two of us to do quite a bit of panting and sweating. Um, and the rain began to fall. And that was one of those moments uh, that really stuck with the director of nursing and me as we tried to cope through this challenging night, knowing that really the toughest um, toughest thing about that night was to provide compassion and care to that elder and to reassure the people who were going to be taking care of her. By the next day, we had two more elders who were having symptoms. So we got on a conference call with the Louisville Metro and Kentucky Departments of Public Health. Uh, we requested our testing be bumped up as soon as possible. And as soon as it could happen was going to be Wednesday, May 20th. So we were grateful for that. The next day, surveyor came in for our COVID-focused survey, infection control survey, emergency preparedness survey, zero deficiencies. We were really pleased by that. But Friday night, and of course it was Friday late, results came back in. That Saturday, we were facing 40 room moves. And I've never experienced anything like moving 40 people in one day. And that's what we had upon us, this time without very much help um, because so many of our staff were out, this time with a lot more PPE, um, with a lot more serious need for disinfection and sanitation. And we were grateful to have an offer of assistance from emergency management. We had some firefighters and EMTs come in. Uh, that was great, but that added a lot of chaos and took away opportunity for us to communicate as best we could with the elders and with our employees. And at that point, our, elder, our, our employees were starting to basically have some freak out going on. There were some strong emotions based on those results that had come back and a lot of loss of control that was needing a lot of attention from those of us who were in the building. And I will say that was a day that at that point was the toughest day in my 25 year career. There had been a test result that was positive until we got word that that employee was in the ICU. Uh, found out later that she was one of the people who the Friday night of the test results had run out of the building because she was afraid. And we had coached her to come back in to let her know that if we would use the PPE and do the right thing, it was going to be OK. Uh, this was really tough. And personally, she was six months younger than me. So uh, that's been another challenge for all of us. All told, just to finish the story, um, right now we've seen 76 cases of COVID, 43 elders and 33 employees. Um, we've had 17 people go to God. We've lost about 30 employees to terminations for some reason or another, and our census has dropped by half. I've had a lot of weeks with no day off, a lot of really long days, and probably like the rest of you, lost a lot of sleep, had some nightmares. Personally, the worst thing for me was that my teenage daughter was fearful about being around me because of this and moved in to be with her father. So I was pretty much home. Uh, I'm going to tell you, frankly, I've had some PTSD. Um, uh, 
remember in the faces of the elders who were going out to the hospital, some of whom I've never seen again, and the voices of the families that I spent a lot of time talking with who have been unable to see their loved ones.